Well, there were two men driving down a country road, and all of a sudden, a hare, a wild rabbit hare, jumps out in front of the car, and they hit it. And the driver was really upset, and he said, well, I don't know, let's go see this. We can do something. He said, don't worry, the other pastor, don't worry about it. He reaches in his glove compartment, takes out a can, gets out of the car, goes over and sprays the hair. And it comes back to life. And bounces down the road, turns around and waves. <laughs> bounces down a little more, waves again. The guy looks at his friend and says, what is that, some kind of magic potion? He says, no, it's just hairspray. It says right here. It says right here. It's life to get hair as permanently. <laughs> I love the uh, sermon by uh, Tony Campolo and, and uh, where he quotes actually his pastor. It's not an original. Most people know it because of Tony, but he quotes his pastor. Uh, and the title of the sermon was, It's Friday, but Sunday is coming. And that phrase has been stolen by a lot of pastors throughout the country. And he said, he said but it's really a great sermon if you ever get it. And um, it's because it sums up, sums up really what, what the Easter message is. Is that death is not the end of the story. That's really the that's really the message of Easter. That death is not the end, and um, and that no matter what we're going through, whatever the circumstances are for us, our story is still in progress. And even when we die, that's not the end of the story. You know, for the Christian, we say in our funeral service uh, at that what we believe is that life is not ended; it's changed. There's a good move from one place to the other. And ultimately, the resurrection proclaims that death is an enemy. It's not a friend. You know, there, there was a lot of teaching that went around <coughs> for a while about the cycle of life. You know, that, that death is just part of the cycle of life and you should learn to embrace it. And, and uh, well, that's the lion kid. That's not the gospel. <laughs> um, for a Christian, death is an enemy. And death is an enemy, and you know, I just uh, heard that Bishop Phil Weeks' uh, wife died. And they were married some 67, 68 years, and she ended up having Alzheimer's. And it was a slow death. I mean, just took like 10 years, 11 years. Yeah. She suffered with, with Alzheimer's, and he retired, and he took care of her. He wouldn't put her in a nursing home. He wouldn't. Let, I mean, he just stayed by her side and was there when she died. And a great love story. It's a really wonderful love story. And but I just talked to him, and, and he's, he's <coughs> commenting with everybody who loses a loved one. That there's an emptiness that there's not words for that you, you can't you can't fill that spot. Well, that's because death is an enemy. Death destroys the sweet communion that we have with someone we love, and we miss them. And I tell people that's good. That means you love them. You didn't miss them. You know, like wife dead and you're happy. That's not good. <laughs> and Christians try to do that. How is she? That's going to, that's a reality. Mourning is, is evidence of love because death is an enemy. And we read this morning, it's going to be the last enemy totally defeated. Amen. You know, for all of us, actually, because we're going to live forever. And we see that God reveals that knowledge. He reveals it in, um, in nature. 
For those of us who come from places where there's real weather, um, <laughs> we, have, we have four seasons. <laughs> and and well, what happens every year, uh, you get in touch with, what happens every year is this, you know, there's death, you know, and around February, that's why everybody comes down here. <laughs> it's depressing. I mean, it's not only cold, it's depressing. Everything's gray. You know, people are gray. <laughs> it's just this gray sky. There's, there's just no life. And then all of a sudden, you realize that's not the end. That one day, those trees are going to and, it, and because of the beauty of it is incredible, because there's just life. So that, that God's revealing that about us as well. So, and then what we know biblically that resurrection is, is throughout Scripture. Jesus isn't the first one raised from the dead. You see, you have in the Old Testament, you have a, a Zarephath's son. Shunite woman's son, the Israelite man, the second kings, and Jesus, the widow of Nain's son, Jairus' daughter, and of course, Lazarus. And then even after the resurrection of Jesus, there, there's, you know, well, at his crucifixion, there's all the saints. I remember wandering around the city of Jerusalem who were raised from the dead. Um, but here's the main difference about that and Easter. What we're really doing and celebrating today. And it's found in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. <coughs> There's some discussion about what the first creed of the church is. Most of us learn it's a baptismal creed, but it's really not. I think the first creed is Jesus is Lord. Mm -hmm. Those who proclaim that Jesus is Lord, so it's just a proclamation of who he is. And then there's a second creed, I believe, and it's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, before what we read. <coughs> Paul writes, let me just share it with you. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received. Oh, is this is something that was taught to Paul. He received it probably from the apostles. First converted, he went. And they're saying, look, here's the essence of the faith. Which is why I believe this is one of the earliest creeds. He uses that phrase, by, by the way, in another place, only in one other place. And all you Bible scholars know where that is, right? It's the Eucharist. So I pass on to what I received to the dead on the night before he died and took bread. So here we have this early belief of the church that's centered in the Eucharist. But now he talks here, he says, So I pass it on what I first received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. Amen? That he was buried. He was really dead. That's very important. Remember, there's a message that he wasn't really dead. He was drunk. They buried. You don't bury a lot of people unless you're the mafia. That <laughs> <laughs> he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas. We all know that story, right? Then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive. I find that, I find that fascinating. Because there are some who say, well, the apostles lie. You know, they just made up the story. I can't imagine why they would do that. Or how anybody could keep that story for a long period of time, especially when you're hanging upside down on a cross with nails in your hands. You think, you know, I mean, I remember Richard Nixon, one of the powerful men of the world, died the time they They couldn't keep their mouth shut for a year. <laughs> they ratted everybody out. And all they were facing is like five years of federal jail. It's just like a country club. You know. And they just ratted each other out. So, but, the, but given that, now he says, listen, given this 
conspiracy theory, there's 500 people talking. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of people. All proclaiming that Jesus was raised from the dead. And then, then though some have fallen asleep, and then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And this is most important. Last of all, as the one untimely born, he appeared to me. Now, why is that important? All those others, <coughs> Jesus has not yet ascended into heaven. But Paul didn't encounter Jesus until after Jesus was sitting on the throne. <coughs> now, if he had an encounter that makes all the difference for you and me, See, Jesus, let's say, the resurrection, after the resurrection, there's these series of teachings, and you're going to have them on Sunday. There's, there's, there's these post-resurrection appearances, and all of them are very significant to study and to read. Hopefully your pastors will preach on them, because they're really good stuff. <coughs> and then Jesus ascends into heaven, and he says, remember, it's better for me to leave than, than to stay around. And because something else is going to happen, one side different. And what Jesus does when he ascends into heaven is, is, is he takes something back to heaven he didn't come with. He takes humanity back to heaven. Amen. Yeah, thank you. He's human. You want to know what God looks at like? Look at a crucifix. And you look at the love of God. A human. That's God on the cross. It's not one part of God killing another part of God. It's God. And God ascends back to the throne, if you will, in human form. And when we see him, we're going to see his wounds. What did Thomas want to see? Show me your wounds. Then I know you're human. Then I'll know who you are say you are. That you're not a ghost or not some spirit being. You know? And so when we die, we're going to be restored in humanity. Our humanity is going to heaven. And we will be human in heaven, not a bell, not an angel. You know, we're not going over the rainbow bridge. You know, whatever those things are, we're going to be resurrected with a body bodily resurrection that's going to be human. Only it's going to be perfect human. Thank you, Lord. Because we're right now human with flaws. Right? But we won't be. And actually we're becoming more and more like that. And so he comes and we worship out of it. I've always got this, this thing, you know, this, with a, a Catholic background of wearing a crucifix so people come up to me and they look at me and say, well, I don't worship a dead man on a cross. I don't either. <laughs> you know? But, you know, I have a picture of my wife and I getting married. Doesn't mean I'm stuck there. You know, I'm done. But that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> he died on a cross. <laughs> then, then they get really up and they go, well, I worship a risen Jesus. I said, I don't do that either. I worship a Jesus sitting on a throne. That's why I worship. That's why I like liturgy. It tries to look like heaven rather than have heaven look like a concert. Want to make it look like heaven? And we even know some of the music. You know? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Now you might get bored by that, but God likes that song. <laughs>
I want to be in the throne room with God. And he's seated on the throne. And from that throne, I know, is that Jesus, because he was alive, found me already dead. I was already dead. It says I was dead in my sin. My condition was dead. And you know something about dead? Dead people can't do nothing. Very important to understand that concept. They can't help themselves because they're dead. <laughs> Jesus was dead. He didn't raise himself from the dead. Did you know that? Don't say Jesus raised himself from the dead. God raised him from the dead because dead people can't do anything. They're dead. <laughs> so you look around at the people that, you know, out there in the world, some of them turn, but the rest of them, they can't help themselves. They're dead in their sin. That, that's where they're at. They need to be raised. They can't do it themselves. But Jesus found me dead. And it says, but he raised me to new life. Why? Because he's alive. He's not risen. He's alive. He's alive and he's in the midst of us. And he's going to be present with us in food that gives us life. The bread and the wine. And he's going to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Who's what? The Lord and giver of life. Why does the church oppose to abortion? Because it's about death. It's not about babies, although it is about babies. It's about death. For Christians, death can't be the solution to anything. It's an enemy. We don't cooperate with the enemy. I can go on for some other things where we just celebrate death for them. No, we celebrate life. We're the message of life. You know? And so, comes in, he gave me life. And what did he do with that life? This is really important to understand. Because there are a lot of people waiting to be risen from the dead. I've already been risen from the dead. I'm not waiting to die or to get risen from the dead. In fact, I'm not waiting to die and get to heaven. Because my Bible says I'm already seated with him in the heavenly places. I'm already in heaven. When my body dies, I'm just changing seats. <laughs> I'm already there. And I really believe that all those who have died before in the body are here. Yeah. Yeah. See, somebody said, but, you know, I asked the saints to pray for me. You know why? Because they will and you might not. <laughs> That's a crit I'll pray for you sometimes just a Christian response, so I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> but there and some people say, You can't do that, you're dead. So the last time I checked, they're very much alive. Amen. And they always point me to Jesus. Their whole lives pointed to Jesus. But we're surrounded, we're going to say this morning, we're surrounded by angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. Who is that? So all the people who me for them. I woke up this morning thinking about my mother. She's, she's with the Lord. She loved Easter. That's how she came to mind. But she's here. She's still celebrating Easter better than I am. You know, because she's alive. Her body completely made whole. <coughs> See, that's the message of Easter. Is that heaven is here. And we have to live out in the heavenly realms. And Paul writes again in class, he says, if, you, if this has happened, you seek those things that are where? Above. Where we're seated. Think about those things. Well, in that place, not here. 
And how often we hear a message that says, oh, here's the good news. You can have a nice life here. So set your eyes on earthly things. Your new car, your new house, your college education. No, why don't you set your heart on things above? And then God, who's your provider, will take care of the rest. You don't have to worry about it. Store up for yourself things in the heavenly places where we're seated. See, that's the message of the resurrection. If we're to live as a resurrected people in the world, we're going to live as a people who are walking in the power of the risen Christ now. And then we will see the enemy defeat because death is not the end of the story. It's not, no matter what it looks like, it's not the end. And even for those people walking around today who are dead, that's what I thought that TV show was about, you know, Walking Dead. I was mistaken, so. That's not the end of their story. We can be the people who change their story. To intervene with the life-saving power of the living Lord Jesus. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Hey, this is Father Scott Loco with Church of Messiah. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and you got something out of it, please click the like button below. And also, you can click the subscribe button to get notifications in your inbox when we post other videos in the future. You can click the little bell below and you'll get uh, notifications also. So do that and uh, we'd appreciate it. So thanks. God bless you. We appreciate it. Uh, pray for us and we'll be praying for you. God bless you.